Compression tutorials can be far too confusing and scientific if you're just starting out. And as someone learning how to use a compressor for the first time, you should be concerned about three things. Attack, release, and the actual amount of gain reduction you're getting on the tracks that you're compressing. But let's forget about all the scientific lingo we use when we teach compression. Let's explain this in the simplest way possible so that you can actually start compressing your tracks correctly. What you are looking at on the screen is compression. These are the same exact snare drum with the same exact compressors on them printed to a new track. But why do they look so different? We're gonna get into that. Now, first of all, I just wanna say after you've watched this video and you have a good idea on how compression works, how to set your compressor, make sure you go and download my Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide, which does have your go-to starting points for compression as well as EQ for all your tracks. And this guide has helped a lot of people out. So make sure you go and grab that for free. Now I'm going to be using the stock logic compressor to explain this because honestly, this compressor is intimidating for beginners due to the amount of knobs it has. And I want to show you that you don't really have to worry about most of these and that this is just nothing to be afraid of. Let's get some of the easy stuff out of the way. My ratio is set to four to one about 99% of the time. Again, I'm not gonna get into the science behind this. Just know that this is a standard ratio that most everybody uses and it's gonna get you great results. Let's talk about the knee next. So do not worry about the knee. In fact, all of the other compressors that I use don't even have a knee control. They are all predetermined. So if your compressor does have a knee like this one has, I would just leave it at the default setting and I wouldn't even really worry about it. Now to the more important stuff, attack and release. Now, if I explain this to you, it will sound like Greek. So I don't want to do that. I just want to show you with your eyes. So let's first talk about attack. Now for this example, I just have a simple snare drum track here. So let's turn our compressor on and start messing with the attack. Now, first of all, before I do any work, I wanna turn the auto release off and the auto makeup gain off because these are settings that I wanna have control over. I don't want uh, the compressor to be working on its own. So we're gonna control all this, but let's actually bring this attack the fastest it can go, which is zero milliseconds. And let's see if we're getting any gain reduction. Getting a little bit, almost hitting minus five. So let's actually bring this threshold down more. So we're getting just a ton of compression. So we're really compressing that signal now. And this is when we can turn the makeup gain up. So we're at the same level we were uh, before it was compressed. And we can bypass this in and out to make sure we're at the same volume. around the same volume, it's not perfect, uh, but there's definitely a big tonal difference and we'll get into that. So now what I'm gonna do is actually bounce this region in place and basically print that compressor into the track and I'm gonna call it snare fast attack. Okay, so we have our bounce track down here and let's just go back into our snare track and let's mess with the attack. So this time let's make it a slower attack. Maybe around 80 milliseconds. Now 
And again, we will just bounce this region in place here. And we'll call it snare slow attack. All right, now what we can do is look at the waveforms and compare everything. So we have the original snare on top, the slow attack right below it, and then the fast attack below that. And what I wanna show you guys is what happened to the snare transient. So this little point here where the stick first hits the snare, that's where all the punch is, that is the transient. And we can see this is a snare drum, so it's pretty pointy. With our slow attack, we exaggerated that point and almost made this snare drum more punchy. So you're gonna feel that. With the fast attack, we took all of that point away. So if you have a fast attack, that compression is hitting a lot sooner. In short, attack is how quickly the compressor is acting. Now for things like drums, it makes sense that we want a slower attack because we most of the time want our drums to be punchy. So if we listen to this slow attack snare, it sounds like a normal snare drum. But if we listen to the fast attack, there is absolutely no punch to this snare drum and it doesn't really even sound much like a snare anymore. Yeah, we've lost all that aggression and all that punch. So the rule of thumb is drums usually have a slow attack while most everything else like vocals or guitar or bass, most of that has a medium to fast attack because we don't really want a lot of peaks and valleys in our vocals and guitar tracks. Now let's go back to our compressor here and talk about release. And this is gonna be really simple. So with release, on any of my compressors, nine times out of 10, I am at the fastest release the compressor has. Release basically tells the compressor when to let go of the compression, and usually we don't want it hanging on too long. So I would just keep my release the fastest I could go on my compressor if I was just starting out. The only times where I start to slow up a little bit is on things like guitar, electric guitar, or acoustic guitar. And, you know, usually I don't even slow up all that much. Basically here, the faster your release is, the more apparent the compression sound is. So if you want more transparent compression, you can slow it up. But I actually like the way compression sounds and almost use it as an effect on things like my vocal tracks. Lastly, I just want to talk real quick about the actual amount of compression you're getting. Now, I have a lot of videos showing how to compress vocals and, and guitars and, and all that. Uh, but what I want to say is that a lot of times people shy away from compression when they're starting out when they should be compressing even more because a lot of people working out of their homes don't have the ability to compress while recording. The big guys are compressing while they're recording, while they're mixing, when they're mastering. So they're compressing in every stage of the process. If you don't have the ability to compress while you're recording, say your vocal track, then you're probably going to want to add a good amount of compression during the mix. At least try it out to see how it sounds. I usually just compress as much as I can before it starts sounding bad and really push the limits on my compressors. Now, for most of our compressors out there, if you're using like a stock compressor, the threshold basically tells you how much gain reduction you're gonna get. So if you want more gain reduction, you're gonna bring this down. And if you want less, you bring it up. Now, like I said, most of the compressors I use don't even have all these knobs in it. And I never really use this stock compressor. So this is something like a compressor that I would normally use. And as you can see, there's no threshold on it. It's predetermined. 
Uh, there's a couple options for ratios, but you can't get too uh, granular like the other one. Uh, so we have attack and release set here, but this just has an input and an output knob. So for this, we really just drive the input into the compressor to get more compression. And then we level match it with the output knob. I would urge you to try out different compressors because they do all sound different. But if you are using the Logic stock compressor, I have a great video showing you the difference, talking a little bit about the difference in tones of all these uh, stock compressor options that Logic has for us. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure and go grab a copy of my home studio mix guide with your go-to EQ and compression settings for all your tracks. And also go ahead and register for my online mix training that I hold a couple times a week so that you can learn how to turn your home recorded tracks into a professional product.